Hello and welcome. In this video we will install Linux Mint 21 by the codename Vanessa on an USB drive, this one here. This will be a full Linux installation on the USB drive and that means that all changes that you're doing afterwards will be saved to the drive. And that's the whole point, we want a full Linux installation that we can change afterwards, that we can use as a normal system and not just a live preview. If you are interested how to install Ubuntu, Manjaro or Pop! OS on a persistent USB drive, then you can check the video link up there or down in the description. Down in the description are also all the necessary links as well as the timestamp so you can skip any part of this video. And if you like this kind of content and want to see more of it, I have a lot more Linux and Docker related videos on my channel and there is more to come, so please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. This is the official Linux Mint 21 Vanessa blog post. At the time of recording Linux Mint 21 is in beta, but this doesn't matter, we will install it anyways. And if you scroll down here, you will find the download links. So let's go with this one for instance, and let's download. Once we have the ISO, we will take it and flash it onto a USB drive, and this will be the live USB drive with the live environment. Then we will boot into this USB drive, into this live environment, and from there we will install Linux Mint on another USB drive. So yes, you will need two USB drives. The second USB drive where we will install the full Linux Mint should be a more faster one because if the read-write speed of the USB drive is not decent enough, you will have a very bad experience, the performance will be bad, and even if you have a newer system, it will not help you much because the USB drive is the bottleneck. So get a decent USB drive. The ISO is ready. Here it is. Now we need to flash it on a USB drive and therefore we will use a tool called Rufus. So this is Rufus, this is the official website, and here if you scroll down, here is the download link, let's download it, complete, let's open it, here it is, this is Rufus, now plug in the first USB drive, I will do this as well. Rufus should automatically detect it, but in case it didn't, you have a drop down here, and now here you can select your USB drive, then go to select, and select the downloaded ISO, open, and now press start. ISO image mode is ok. And now it tries to warn us that everything that is currently on the USB drive will be deleted. So if you have anything important on the USB drive, make a backup first because everything will be deleted. So we are okay with that. And let's wait. Finished. We can close this. On this USB drive is now the live Linux Mint environment. And now we need to boot into it. I will assume that you know how to boot from a USB drive. Usually what you need to do, you plug in the USB drive, you restart the system, and then while it restarts, you press one of the function keys. Usually it's F11 or F12, but this depends on your PC manufacturer. Then you will get the boot menu, and then from this boot menu, you should select your USB drive. I will do this on my system as well, so I will see you in the live environment. Here we are, this is the Linux Mint 21 live environment, so we booted into the USB drive. And now it is time to plug in the second USB drive where we will install the full Linux Mint. I will do this on my system as well. Alright, connect it. And now let's launch the installer. This is the Linux Mint installer. English is OK. Continue. Continue again. Multimedia codex. Yes, we want that. We want to be able to play videos. Continue. In my case it already mounted the USB drive where we want to install Linux Mint on. So let's go with yes to unmount it. Installation type, this is the important part, here we need to select something else and continue. Now here you need to find your USB drive, I know mine is SDB, here it is, SDB, and it already contains partitions. We will need to delete everything that's on the USB drive. So again, if you have anything important on there, make a backup first. So let's remove those partitions, the minus button, and again, this one. So you should see only free space under the device. Now click on free space, click on the plus button, and let's create the first partition. It should have about 500 megabytes, this should be enough, and the type should be EFI system partition. OK. And now the second partition, select again free space, plus button. This one should occupy all the rest of the space, and it should be an ext4 partition. And then the mount point should be slash for root. OK. So here we have those two partitions. Then down here make sure to select your device for bootloader installation. In my case this is SDB, so this one is OK. And install now. Here you get a summary what will be done, that's OK. Now here select your region, I will just go with the default, that's OK. And then your username and password, so fill that out. This will be your username, and continue. And now wait for the installer to finish. 
Installation complete, but we are not done yet. Select continue testing. First, let's check some things. Open the disk's utility, this one here. And now let's find the USB drive where we installed Linux Mint. And let's mount the first partition. Here it is. Now in my case, this first EFI partition is empty. We need to fix that. Go back to the disk's utility. And now here, select your main drive. And here, mount the first EFI partition. Open it. Go inside EFI. And now here is the problem. The EFI entries were installed here instead of this USB drive. If in your case you see the EFI entries on the USB drive on the first partition, then you are safe and you can skip this step. The easiest thing to fix this issue is just create a new folder here, call it EFI, and then inside the folder, now here on the main drive, you probably see the boot folder and the Ubuntu folder, and then maybe some other folders here as well, but we are only interested in those two, boot and Ubuntu. Now maybe you're thinking, why Ubuntu? This is Linux Mint. This Linux Mint version is obviously based on Ubuntu, and that's why you see the Ubuntu entry here instead of Linux Mint, for instance. So this is actually Linux Mint. Now copy those folders and paste them here. All right, that should be enough. Now we can remove the Ubuntu entry here from the main drive, just delete it. We are done here, let's close this. Let's close this as well. And now we should be able to boot into the USB drive. So we can just restart, restart. Now it prompts you to remove the live USB drive with the live Linux Mint environment. So that's what I will do. Plug out just the first USB drive, then press enter, and you should be able to boot into the full Linux Mint installation. Now in my case, I needed to go into the boot menu two times in order to find the USB entry, which was called Ubuntu instead of Linux Mint. Maybe this is a problem just on my machine. Maybe it has to do something with the EFI entries. I'm not really sure. But in case you have the same problem, restart the system, open the boot menu, select the USB drive, boot into it, and then on the second boot, open the menu again, and then you should see the EFI entry Ubuntu. All right, let's boot into the system. And this is it, Linux Mint, the welcome page, version 21. And this is now running from the USB drive. Let's click this away. So you can use this one as a normal Linux installation. You can update the system, you can install apps, and you can basically take this one with you and plug it into any machine you want and just boot into it. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, if you like content like this, then give a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. It means a lot to me and it makes the channel grow. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.